Hey there, guys. Nice to see you again. Let me just fix my camera a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, I hope you are doing fine today. I am back with the third chapter of the book. My name is Raul Kasandu, as you already uh, know. Uh, if you are here for the first time, welcome. You can find my other two videos uh, about the book in uh, in uh, on my channel. Sorry. Uh, this is the book I'm talking about. It's the purpose uh, of life and the adult theory, how to overcome your circumstances through art. It's my book and it's available on Amazon in um, uh, paper, uh, in a hardcover, right, in paperback, and uh, in uh, the um, ebook version, Kindle version. Sorry, I'm nervous. I'm like talking um, like this. But oh, um, let's uh, move forward to today's chapter. Uh, today's chapter is really short. It's um, almost two pages. And it's called The Paradox of Happiness. The more you chase it, the more bad it becomes. Um, okay, so the paradox of happiness, as I put it here in the book, this is the cover of the book. Okay. Um, the paradox of happiness is deeply connected to emotional addiction. I won't dedicate too much time on this subject because as you will further see, it is more a summary of everything I have explained so far. Nevertheless, to make things clearer and easier to follow, I will briefly present it. So before going further into this chapter, for those of you that are here for the first time, in the previous videos, we discussed about the concept of beauty and about the uh, ways we can uh, detach from um, uh, codependent relationships. And briefly told, the concept of beauty is how to build up inner beauty, how to educate ourselves, be more present, be more warm, uh, more um, kind, gentle, uh, and how should I say, uh, humble also. Uh, there are 10 aspects of it that I mentioned in the first video of this series. And uh, it's important to build that up as we try to heal from our uh, difficulties because uh, it's not only about showing or being a certain presence, like well-dressed, behave nicely. It's also important to integrate those things. And then um, about the second chapter, uh, briefly, again, uh, that's about how to uh, detach ourselves from the identity that was um, offered us as an option and how to carry that fight between who we know we are at our core and who they told us to be. And uh, in the process, how to regulate emotionally and uh, be the best that we can be, uh, like balanced and uh, uh, with a clear mind and um, and um, um, how to be uh, good, how to be okay with ourselves, all in all. So the third chapter, this chapter about the products of happiness, uh, is mostly about um, the fact that we should try to um, build happiness inside us, not outside of us. And it says here, for example, it's, uh, it's kind of impossible to define happiness, right? Because each one of us has his or, his or her own perspective of what happiness really means. Yet there is one thing to remember, until you find inner peace, we will never find happiness on the outside. They are codependent, right? Therefore, we must achieve inner happiness in order to experience outside happiness. Assuming you have managed to see pain and suffering from a perspective of self-growth, and you have learned some valuable lessons, then the process of healing shouldn't be difficult, and we can agree with Valerio Albicetti, who says, for the one who finds himself on the path of growth, the world is a gift from God, not a solid ground. It is a place where we have to live and share with others, not a space for manipulation, but a space for meeting and confrontation. So inner happiness relies on the lens 
through which you see the world, it uh, relies on uh, who, we are, who you are and what you have achieved in your life from the point of view of the education, personality, experience, background, self-esteem and self-acceptance. All these takes us. Uh, all these take us to a general state of well-being. Happiness, like someone used to say, is only the price that keeps us awake and headed to the end of the tunnel. It's made of daily instances and means remembering the good in people, living by doing good and being at peace with yourself and others. Happiness means forgiving. Outside happiness comes comes uh, the moment you have managed to achieve or to achieve all or at least a good part of those things is it about that define the inner happiness because once you went through all those phases you are able to give without pretending to take back you don't give under the pressure of expectation you give out of goodwill you want to see others happy for the sake of better days and a better you so i would add here that once you learn all this, you give out of goodwill, but you give with limits. Because giving without limits, as well as taking without limits, is still uh, coming from a source of pain, a source of, uh, of wound. And it's important to, you know, it's like a also joke, I'm a coffee person. Uh, like, I like coffee very much. I also have one in, uh, in my left uh, on the desk. So when you have coffee, for example, uh, sometimes you, you want a refill, you know, to refill with the cup. Uh, also when you have water or drink or juice or whatever you, you prefer to drink. Um, so you go for a refill and it's the same way we should see this part of giving. Um, okay, give, drink maybe half. I mean, give maybe half or you drink maybe half uh, or a little bit more than a half, but then you refill. You, you feel again that cup. That's how you should give or, or think about the concept of giving. Give, but go and uh, fill again your cup, right? Get more tea uh, to give to other people to taste. Get more coffee, get more, uh, I don't know, um, iced coffee with uh, cream and uh, sugar and pumpkin spice uh, um, aroma and whatever you want your coffee to be with. Um, but go for an emotional refill, uh, go for an emotional recharge. I'm sorry if maybe I'm pronouncing that refill, I don't know but um, go for an emotional recharge, right? Uh, and if you feel tired, if you feel anxious, if you feel like, oh my gosh, there's been a lot uh, lately and uh, I don't feel okay, or like feel yourself, put your hand on your chest and uh, feel yourself and say, okay, I'm tired and I'm not physically tired, but I'm emotionally tired. And then that goes on to, um, physical uh, fatigue and then you say okay I need 30 minutes one hour rest uh, whatever the, the amount would be uh, the amount, amount of time but go and recharge and uh, fill again that cup and only then you can continue giving from a good um, from a good source let's say and then it says here, once you have built a life and made your way towards healthier social interactions, because your cup is filled, is uh, full, um, okay, and what you desire to achieve, once you become self-aware and really present in your life, only then will you know that you have uh, started to heal from the short, shortcomings of the past, okay? Only then will you know how to combine these two types of happiness in a perfectly balanced way so that you can live a happy and fulfilled life, helpful for others and at peace with yourself. Okay, so this concept of living a happy and fulfilled life. You know, life is not linear, never linear. Life is with ups and downs, with falls and uh, getting back up, with uh, 
stumbling over things or uh, whether they are emotional things or uh, physical things or it's just guys you know you're alive when things are happening okay good things are happening or at least in a constructive way uh, when those things don't happen your way um, that's the moment when you have to fill your cup okay because you know at our best we can be kind and gentle and uh, uh, humble and whatever uh, good positive aspect we can uh, cultivate uh, as the book says but the thing is how to integrate those things to be um, as best as possible and as good as possible at our worst. Because there's a, there's a saying that um, there's a saying uh, uh, there's this saying that um, we can all be our best when things go our way, but it's, it's when things don't go our way that uh, we see ourselves for real, okay? And there's this other saying from a Romanian saint that says, uh, when things go uh, get hard in life, uh, get your best cup and have a tea, okay? Get your best cup, the most beautiful cup you can get and you have uh, and have some tea, sit down and have some tea. And this, I think, is one of the most important and most beautiful concepts I've ever heard because um, that's the whole point. When things go rough and when things go awful, let's just breathe in, sit down, grab our, our favorite cup of coffee or tea or our favorite mug if you want, okay? And have some tea, have some coffee, have, a, have some water. Have some of whatever uh, makes you feel good um, in that moment. And drink something, not alcohol, okay? Don't go to alcohol. Drink something that um, allows you to like, sit down, think, analyze, breathe, integrate what's happening, or at least not integrate, but observe what's happening. But you said observe what's happening. And while you observe, those what's happening, try to detach and see what can I control and what is it that I can't control, can't control in this situation. And okay, I can control A, B, C, D things, two to four things, let's say. Okay, let's see how can I um, do my best in those particular areas of this situation, of this issue. Um, and then, um, See, okay, let's see what is it that I can't control in this situation. Well, 80% of it. Good, okay. 80% of it I can't control. Okay. Then the, the magic, let's say, is that while doing those two things that you can control and um, uh, building up your uh, inner balance while drinking that glass of water or cup of tea or of coffee or whatever, you can think better and you can feel like, okay, things are happening, good things are happening. If I can control this, this um, few aspects, I, I can do my part in these aspects. And that's how you move forward in these situations. And that's how, uh, let's say, uh, happiness, inner happiness is built and put in, into practice, okay? Because the goal, as I said earlier, is to stay chill, as uh, we would say in our younger times, uh, and uh, focus on uh, what you, you can do best at that moment, at that very moment. Um, okay. As an example, for those who of you who, who are in business, maybe, or um, have a um, particular situation, Mm. For example, in business, you can't really control things fully. So there are times when, especially as freelancers, uh, there are times when uh, we have clients and times when we don't. And especially during summer, we have less clients. 
what can you do then to control the situation? Well, the, you can propose, uh, let's say, um, or you can apply to jobs or projects. You can promote, you can post uh, certain things um, on your personal page. You can do things that encourage people to come, but you cannot control them coming actually, or they, you cannot control them coming at the time you would like them to, but you're planting the seeds, okay? And this planting the seeds is a biblical context because, or concept, because they say like, okay, the seeds are good, but if you throw them, throw them uh, uh, into um, a certain type of wood, they will be um, lost. If you throw them into the rocks again, not, not much will happen uh, or they might grow and then die. But if you throw the, the seeds into uh, a good wood, uh, not a good wood, sorry, um, a good soil. Okay, if you throw the seeds in, in a good soil and then they will grow and flourish and uh, uh, bring uh, fruit. Okay, so that's how we do also in life and in certain situations, either if it's business or if it's another type of issue. You plant seeds, you uh, do your part in that particular situation with calm and being calm and assertive and, and as balanced as you can be uh, in the uh, situation that you can control in the part that you can do. Sorry if I repeat myself. And uh, then uh, you will see how those things uh, will flourish and influence maybe the part that you uh, can control less. And if that part is not influenced, at least you are, um, let's say, going through that period or that season of your life in a more balanced manner while being also a little bit productive by doing what you can do to, uh, in that very moment. And by um, acting, uh, not acting, which means uh, by, um, by acting uh, and by uh, um, uh, creating some action and being in the phase of creating something uh, and uh, doing things in the area that you can control for certain situation. And that's how you stay balanced and focused in during times that you cannot control that are. Um, problematic and difficult for, for you. And uh, this way you can uh, fill your cup during hard times and, uh, um, and be at your um, very best even when um, rain comes and time, times get hard uh, and uh, you can practice what you preach this way. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for listening. Again, this was the book, right? Uh, the Purpose of Life and the Ada Theory, okay? How to look in your circumstances to art. And, um, and yeah, and you can get it on Amazon uh, in, uh, for the Kindle version and also as a paperback. Link in the description, get your version. I can wait for you to tell me how uh, the book helped you and uh, stay close and see you soon in the next video. Bye.